Hey guys, welcome back to Shelf Life Extension. I'm Alexis and today I'm going to be coming at you with a book haul. So, I've noticed there are a lot of book hauls on, uh, you know, the book tubes right now because of like BEA and BookCon and whatever. So like everybody is doing book hauls for all the books that they got at those events. Well, uh, I wanted to do a book haul as well, although I did not go to BEA or BookCon at all. But uh, I did get some free art from Barnes & Noble which is really cool. So I figured, you know, I would just let you know kind of what I got over the course of the past month and let you know kind of like what I expect to read within the next coming months and stuff. So yeah, let's just go ahead and get started. So I have like this huge stack and I'm trying to remember when I got what, but I really can't remember. So I'm just gonna talk about everything that I bought recently. Let's just do that. So first and foremost, I bought End of Days by Susan E, which is the last and final book of the Penrin and the End of Days trilogy. I have already read this. It was great. I liked it. There were some moments that I felt were really weird compared to the rest of the series, but for overall, it was great. And you'll hear much more about this at the end of the month. So. I bought that. I also bought Hammered, which is the third book in the Iron Druid Chronicles following the story of Atticus O'Sullivan. I have yet to read the second one, it is upstairs, but I figured I would go ahead and buy the third one because I know I love this series anyway and I know I'm gonna wanna continue with it. So I got that. I also got The Lunatic Cafe by Laurel K. Hamilton, which is the fourth novel in the Anita Blake series. Y'all know about my love for this, so I went ahead and bought the fourth one and I have to read the third one, uh, which again is upstairs on my nightstand. And then I got two Susanna Kearsley novels. One is The Season of Storms, which I've already mentioned in my videos a couple times. I have yet to read this, but I bought this guy because it's beautiful and I wanted it and I, you know, why not? And then I also got A Desperate Fortune, which is the most recently published by Susanna Kearsley and uh, it sounds awesome. It sounds super amazing and of course I just love Susanna Kearsley. Like I've mentioned before, I will own all of her novels. I have two more I need to buy to finish out her already published books and then there's another one being published in October. Otherwise I got this. Also, I got Ready Player One by Ernest Cline because, uh, hello, I need this book. It was on our front list and display at the Barnes & Noble forever and I just kept looking at it and I was like, I need this freaking book because everybody says it's amazing, it's being made into a movie, and you know, I just heard so many good things and I'm really excited to read this and understand what's kind of going on. I feel like it's going to be something that I'm really going to love. Everybody who's recommended it, I trust. Yeah, I want to do this. And then I got four arcs because we get a lot of arcs obviously with Barnes & Noble because they want us to read them and be able to like promote the books and personally recommend them to customers throughout the store so I grabbed a decent stack because not a lot of people were grabbing them and I was like uh hello why aren't you grabbing these but I can understand why they wouldn't because it's a very interesting mix of books that they usually give us uh, depending on like the publishers and stuff so the first two I grabbed were Red Street Gate by Robin Kerman and also The Truth According to Us by Annie Barrows. Brad Street Gate comes out in July and it's about these three students who go to Harvard and find a murdered classmate on campus and one of their teachers is suspected of the crime. So it's just about them coming to terms with the death of a classmate and also like the destruction of one of their beloved teachers and kind of like how this entire scenario really plays out in their lives and affects them. So I figured I'd grab it. I really love this cover. I really, I really love this cover. So I grabbed that. Next, I grabbed The Truth According to Us by Ann Barrows. This one is going to be on sale on the 9th. So tomorrow, Tuesday, it'll be on sale. You guys can go grab this. So it's about this girl named Layla Beck who is uh, sent to work on the Federal Writers Project. She's assigned to cover kind of like the history of this small town in West Virginia where she goes and she stays with this random family who are willing to take her in. But it's kind of like about her being drawn into this entire family's drama and craziness and how they are actually very much tied to the history of the town and how there's like skeletons in their 
their closets and stuff and they have a lot of secrets and craziness. I expect good things out of this. It sounded pretty interesting. It's huge, which kind of sucks, but it definitely sounds like something like I would really want to read, particularly summer read, you know what I'm saying? So I grabbed this. And then that was like pretty much it, but then I went back the next, uh, my, my next shift after a couple days and I noticed that there was still a whole bunch of books left that nobody grabbed and I was like, uh, well, I'll take them. So then I grabbed The Shore by Sarah Taylor. This one goes on sale. It's already on sale. It is about a group of people taking on different point of views, I believe, and how they all are connected through this one town and this place called The Shore and it kind of like just goes through their lives and all the craziness that ensues. I don't know, it sounded relatively interesting. I've never really read anything kind of like it, so I'm interested to see how this goes. And it's, you know, it's a small book, so I was like, oh, cool. And it's free, so why not? And then the next, I got Tin Men, a novel by Christopher Golden. As you can see, this is definitely an arc. It doesn't even have a cover on it. My manager put sticky notes on all like a ton of books being like oh it's got this and this and this and so she wrote military techno future and i was just like that sounds dope as fuck so <laughs> i checked it out it's um about a future where the u.s has deployed the remote infantry corps which are thousands of robots remote piloted by soldiers whose bodies lie hidden in underground bases but then there's a rebellion and anarchy sets off a global pulse that shorts out electrical connections so the whole like actual army gets shut down except everybody who was already like connected to their robots so all those soldiers are stuck inside their robots mentally they're so they're connected so it's about them trying to not only like defend obviously the country and the president and everything that's happening because they are soldiers but also trying to figure out how the heck to break the connection and get back inside their original bodies and out of the tin men and craziness this actually sounds super freaking awesome and i'm super glad that i snagged this because i am I, this sounds awesome. This just sounds awesome to me. So, yes, this. And then, you guys, I got a huge stack. A huge stack of manga. Because I was like, you know what? I haven't been buying manga except for Skip Beat. And I haven't been watching a lot of anime. So I was like, I'm going to buy some freaking manga. And so I was looking through the shelves. And I got a couple of new series. But then I'm uh, actually buying a series of one of my favorites. First I got is Kimi ni Tadoke. I absolutely love, love, love this series. I've watched the anime multiple, multiple times. It's one of my favorites. But I've never actually read the manga. So I was like, hey, I'm going to actually start my Kimi ni Tadoke manga collection. So I bought the first one. Sucks that they don't have the three-in-one volumes, but that's completely fine because I love this. It's about this girl named Sawako who everybody thinks is like haunted or that she can like commune with spirits or that she's bad luck. So they kind of just like ignore her and kind of shun her. And she's always awkward anyway. And every time she tries to speak, she kind of comes off scary, but like she's so sweet hearted and absolutely adorable and all she wants is just to be friends with people and um, through her relationship with this boy she then is able to start to change and actually become friends with people because she's more willing to let them know like what she has on her mind it's super cute you guys i just it's adorable if you haven't read this or watched it it's on hulu and netflix i think if it's not on both it's on one and it's adorable you should watch it and uh, And then I also got So Cute It Hurts because I really love Shoujo B manga. They're like my favorite because they're always cute and they always deliver and they're all awesome. Uh, I bought the first one because I didn't realize that they only have the first one out. This is like brand new. The other two are like announced to be released, but they're not released yet. I think the next one comes out in August and then after that it's October and I already pre-ordered them because how that sucks a lot i really love this it's super cute i just know it's gonna be amazing and i'm super excited it's about these two fraternal twins one's a boy one's a girl and how uh the boy is like hey switch places with me so that you can you know pass my classes for me because i'm failing and so he just goes ahead and does that and so it's just about them taking over each other's place and how they both fall in love but obviously they're dressed up as the opposite sex so it doesn't exactly work so i'm super excited about this one and then lastly i got the first five volumes a devil and her love song i first got drawn to it because of the of the actual art which i think is freaking beautiful 
I love it. It's so fancy. I love this cover. Ah, oh, she's cute. It reminded me a lot of The Wallflower, if you guys have ever read or seen that series, because um, it's about this girl who got kicked out of her Catholic school for being violent to a teacher, and how um, at her new school, everybody is like against her because she's so blunt, and she always says what she's thinking regardless of how it'll make people feel. And a lot of people obviously take offense to that and try to like get her kicked out or expelled. And it's just about her trying to overcome that and uh, be more aware of other people's feelings and uh, her making friends and falling in love. And it's super cute. I really, really enjoy it. Obviously I bought the first five. I bought the first one first and then I finished it and I was like, nope, I need the rest. So I bought the next four and then next paycheck I fully plan on buying the rest. Otherwise, that's it. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Please rate, comment, and subscribe, and I'll totally check you guys out later. Bye!